everyone. It's Tuesday evening to you. It is 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. It's a fresh edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. All right, our lake effect. Boy, it's tricky business, isn't it? The uh, lake effect behaved itself pretty much in the primary snow belts, but it struggled a little bit coming into our viewing area. Now, some of us had some pretty high impacts, but a lot of us were wondering, hey, where's the snow earlier on today? You know, that the communication aspect of overnight and early morning snow is always a little bit tricky. I get a lot of comments from people when, when snow is set to begin around daybreak or something like that. I get a lot of comments from people getting up in the morning and expecting three or four inches to be on the ground. You know, when they look out the window first thing in the morning. That was never the expectation for last night and this morning. But we see that a lot of times when snow is set to begin while a lot of people are asleep. Uh, their expectations are a little little off sometimes on what they are going to see when they look out the door. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, while some of us hardly had a flake of snow today, some of us had some pretty good whiteouts. You're going to see that on this time lapse from Niles a couple of times. The, uh, the uh, roadway got covered here. Visibility was reduced. It was a bonafide snow squall. We had accidents here and there. We had uh, problems on I-80 near the state line for a time earlier on today. So we did have some issues, but generally the lake effects kind of underperformed in more places than uh, overperformed, that is for sure. Now at the airport, we managed to scrape together 1.3 inches of snow today. Now, you know, I doubt there was ever 1.3 inches of snow on the ground at any one point. And we see this sometimes with uh, the snow measurements at the airport. Sometimes you look at them a little bit funny sometimes. Uh, they don't necessarily uh, look realistic. I could see where maybe, you know, we pieced together 1.3 at the airport today in, in fits and starts, but I don't think at any point was there ever 1.3 inches of snow on the ground. Uh, it was the coldest day in about nine and a half months today. That high of 26 was at 1225 this morning. We actually only topped out at 25 during the afternoon today, making it our coldest day since, I believe, February the 3rd. Uh, of course, we had a warm winter last year, and the rest of February and much of March was not that cold, of course, last winter. So yeah, it's been nine and a half months since we had a day like today. But I mentioned the uh, snow did behave itself up in the primary snow belts. We saw some double digit totals. I'll just query a few of these. And some of these are getting kind of outdated because a lot of these uh, reports are from this morning with uh, the Weather Service in Cleveland not issuing a lot of uh, storm report updates yet for this afternoon. So a lot of these numbers I'm querying uh, were valid this morning. Uh, with uh, probably some additional numbers uh, still to come in for this evening. But you get the idea. Up in the primary snow belts, Cuyahoga, Lake Geauga, Ashtabula, Crawford and Erie, up into Chautauqua and Cattaraugus in southwest New York, some double-digit amounts have been pretty common. Now, as of 7-11, most of us are in the clear for the rest of the evening, aside from a few flurries. But I'll tell you, some of this activity, some of this residual lake effect snow shower activity can still leave some small accumulations for a time down in our far northern viewing area, northern Trumbull, maybe northwestern Mercer. Um, there's probably some snow falling where the radar is not showing much still around the uh, Route 87 corridor, northern Trumbull, out uh, towards Greenville and places like that in, in northern Mercer. Now, of course, it gets a little bit more significant once you're up into the primary snow belts, Geauga and Ashtabula included, Lake County. But again, in our viewing area, might there still be some small accumulations and some slick surfaces up north? Yeah, that's going to be a possibility. For the rest of us, though, not much more than a flurry from here on out. And actually, the sky will clear some overnight. There's some clearing going on to our south and west, and some of that will work in as we go into the overnight. Uh, leading to a cold night, we'll drop down into the teens tonight as far as air temperatures. Now, wind chills today were in the teens in some single digits at times, and I think we'll wake up tomorrow morning with wind chills down in the single digits. And the wind chills tomorrow will still be no fun, although it's not going to be as harsh as today, um, at least in the afternoon. Still pretty cold in the morning, but Wind chills will recover to the 20s tomorrow afternoon. No picnic, and you know we're not going to be breaking out the shorts, but compared to this afternoon, it won't be quite as blustery and harsh and inhospitable outside tomorrow afternoon. We actually have a warm front tracking our way. That's going to lead to an increase in mid- and high-level clouds for a lot of the midday and afternoon on our Wednesday, so it'll turn out to be a fairly cloudy day. Might be some last-minute sunshine just before sunset. Uh, you know, just before 5 p.m., we might try to get in a little on a little sun at the last minute. Uh, but the more pronounced clearing waits until a little after sunset Wednesday evening. That means a pretty decent start to our Thursday is on the way. I think we'll start with some sun. And although clouds will increase some later in the day, this is the best day of the bunch, Thursday. And I say that because ugh, clunkers coming our way Friday with a warm front approaching. Uh, I think it's going to rain most of Friday. Now it's going to be pretty light. Nothing all that heavy, but it's going to be a cold rain. You know, rain in 39, 40 degrees is 
no fun. It almost might as well snow if it's going to be that cold. But yeah, not a great day coming up on Friday. And unfortunately, that means not great weather for the tree lighting and holiday parade in downtown Youngstown. 21 WFMJ, always a proud sponsor of this fun event. It's a great event to bring the kids to. Um, lots of, uh, you know, things to do, things to eat, see Santa Claus, that sort of thing. Um, but this year, you know, the weather leaves a little to be desired. Now, I think the highest chances for rain will be through mid-afternoon, maybe late afternoon. As we head into the evening, we might see those rain chances decreasing, at least the chance of steady rain. It might try to drizzle still for a time in the evening, but the wetter part of the day is probably a little earlier on. Quick look at the longer range. Uh, you know, we're going to see above average temperatures, it looks like, more often than not over the next couple of weeks. There will be a cold shot around the middle of next week after a fairly mild start to the month of December. We'll get a two or three day period, middle and latter portions of next week, in which it'll get kind of cold, but nothing crazy. And all in all, you know, you look at your temperature forecast here in the medium and longer range, you don't see a lot of blue on these maps. Now, I will say in the week's three and four outlook, uh, we have some questions about as we get a little bit closer to the holidays. Don't forget, today's November 28th. So by week four, we're talking Christmas time. And while you see some oranges here in the northern tier of states, a lot will be determined, I think, over the next week to 10 days as the modeling tries to get a grip on what the polar vortex is doing. Will it be dislodged off of the North Pole over into Asia, keeping all the cold over there? Or will it be dislodged more across our hemisphere introducing colder risks and stormier risks for us as we get closer to Christmas. We don't have good answers for that just yet, but I think in the, in the next week to 10 days, we'll have a better grip on that. Also, there's some questions about uh, some of the uh, goings on in the Pacific Ocean as far as thunderstorm complexes and forcing of the jet stream to do certain things. Um, you may have heard of the Madden-Julian oscillation. There's some questions as to what phases that oscillation will get into. We're getting into some hardcore meteorology here, but bottom line is, I'm fairly, it's fairly low confidence, the overall ideas as we get closer to Christmas time. But I, I do think there's reasonable confidence that much of the next couple of weeks will be fairly mild compared to the average with just a couple of cold shots here and there. Thank you for watching on this Tuesday evening. I'll see you back here for Wednesday's edition of Weather for Weather Geeks.